Hello and welcome warriors. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you to everyone who leaves a polite comment and everyone who helps this tiny channel grow. Truly, without all of you, this channel would be nothing. So you have my humble and grateful appreciation. And I hope you guys will continue to support the channel. So I've noticed a lot of people asking me questions about The Witcher 3, what to do, when, how to become powerful. And I realized I've put up several videos that can help a lot. So if you're interested in those, the only loot and gold guide you will ever need, I feel, is essential if you want to understand how this game's in-game economy works, where to sell everything, how to make tons and tons of money without exploiting the game. I also have the earliest gold farm, which is an exploit, but will show you how to get a massive advantage very early. And I have several overpowered broken build videos. But that brought me to an idea or a conclusion rather, that that is not the vast majority of this game. In fact, that's at the very end, the logical end point or the logical extreme. That is not the vast majority of this game. So how do you become overpowered early? How do you play this game and enjoy it on a higher difficulty level without the need for excessive levels of grinding, exploiting, or farming. And it's really quite simple, so I wanted to show you this because this is just a very simple method for gaining a massive advantage very early on. There's several abilities that are absolutely integral, uh, irreplaceable in my opinion. The first of which is Gourmet. Now, in case you don't know, when you are playing on Story and Sword, or just the Story, Normal or Easy, essentially, you always regenerate hit points, and you regenerate hit points anytime you rest, essentially negating any need for food, swallow, you get the picture. But on Blood and Broken Bones, or Death March, this is no longer the case. Gourmet instantly... Uh, rectifies, reconciles this situation. This allows you to eat food once and constantly regenerate your hit points for 20 minutes regardless of the situation, even during combat. It's an absolute boon and probably one of the most broken abilities in the game. Keep in mind, it is fallible as is everything. It stops working, goes away anytime you rest, you're going to have to eat again, and sometimes it's a glitch. It goes away when you fast travel or when you watch a cutscene or when the game goes to a loading screen, so just keep that in mind. The next most powerful ability is one of the magic abilities, one of the first abilities available to you, and that would be Delusion. During this game, you may notice that fighting normal enemies or even excessively powerful enemies, even skull enemies, even enemies that are level 99. Let us say you get the ability to, uh, you know, I forget what it's called. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's say you gain access to deadly precision. Is that what it is? Yeah, as quickly as possible, you're going to need to be at least a level, I would say, 15 if you collect each and every last one of the places of power that is available to you, you'll be able to reach this. Then you have a chance for insta-kill, meaning all you have to do is survive long enough until the ability procs, and you can indeed kill level 99 monsters regardless of whatever your level is. But the problem with this is that it's pointless because they drop very little in the way of experience points. In fact, in my experience, I think most normal monsters drop between 1 and 2 experience points, and best case scenario up to maybe 20, which is an absolute joke. This game is skewed towards the story. The story will give you obscene amounts of experience points. Like on my recent stream, you burn a rat's nest and you get 100 experience points? Makes absolutely no sense. You enter a cutscene and you get 200, 400 experience points? I digress. Delusion, if you put two levels, not three, you don't need three, if you put the first two points you get into this and use Axie every single time it is available to you to manipulate someone via the Jedi mind trick, you will gain obscene amounts of experience points very, very early. So you want to use this as early and as often as humanly 
possible. Next, the most valuable piece of armor that we can acquire early on is quite easy to acquire. I have a guide on how to farm pigs up for money, and we just simply go to the dude with the patty pimblet. Yeah, the bowl cut. The merchant that we saved from the griffin is located right here by Wosong Bridge, and you can purchase the Temerian set, which is a light armor set. And that said, it will carry you as high as level 12. Quite nice. At that point in time, you're probably going to want to get either the Nilfgaard set or the Griffin set. But early on, this is a massive boon to use the Temerian set as well as a few simple ways to increase your damage. Absolutely obscene. Soon as we get muscle memory, max that out at five and go ahead and get that cat school techniques. Now we have a 45% increase to fast attack damage, which regardless of the situation is always a better DPS than heavy attack. Simply put, you can land between three and five quick attacks before you ever land a heavy attack simply because of the awkward slow animations. 45% straight from the get-go. Even on Blood and Broken Bones or Death March, this will allow you to kill anything that isn't a red skull between three and I would say five quick attacks makes it incredibly, incredibly easy. And that's really all there is to it. This is how I run it early on. Certain things are not valuable at all, I would say. Like the blue tree, I wouldn't really waste much in there until much, much later. In fact, first playthrough, there are several abilities in the gold tree that are just much more valuable, such as strong back, collecting up everything, selling everything, having tons and tons of items, and the ability to craft whatever you want whenever you want is far more valuable than investing a few points here and a few points there into abilities that are going to be worthless unless they're maxed out. And that's really all there is to it. If you want some highlights, other abilities that are quite powerful is a battle trance. If you use this right here, you have essentially a 25% um, chance to deal a critical hit if your adrenaline gauge is maxed out quite nice, can be quite overpowered. Rage management can be quite nice. This allows you to cast spells with adrenaline points rather than stamina. So as long as you're constantly attacking, you can always cast signs. I suggest swapping in Griffin School or Bear School whenever you swap armor sets to medium or heavy, and those will give you various increases such as medium sets increasing all of your sign activity and heavy increasing your various defensive capabilities. And that's really all there is to it. If you keep all of these things in mind, you will have absolutely no difficulty with Blood and Broken Bones or Death March as long as you're playing somewhat diligently, collecting things and you know how to dodge, get out of the way, attack, etc. Hopefully this has clarified some things. Hopefully this will give you a massive boon early on. If there's anything that I have not discussed that you would like me to discuss in further detail, just let me know and I could make a video and or answer you in the comment section. I hope that you have found this useful and informative. If that is indeed the case, please consider leaving a like or a comment and I would truly and humbly appreciate it. Thank you guys once again. Thank you for supporting the channel. I'll see you the next time I stream or post a video. Hope you guys turn out for that. I am uh, essentially going to stream the entirety of The Witcher 3, probably mostly the story. We'll skip all the grinding and that stuff because otherwise we'd be here for two years trying to do this thing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you when I see you. So have a wonderful day. Uh, peace out.